Tower of God, more like Tower of Traitors or Tower of Betrayals, because there was non-stop back-to-back backstabbing within this episode. I mean, we have the whole scene with Hots at the beginning of the episode trying to hold off the Ranker and grab a hold of him for the Spear Bearers can come in and save the day, but obviously they didn't believe in him. They left him alone and betrayed him. Then we have the scene with Endorsey pretty much just taking out the other fishermen and teaching Bam a lesson. And then we have the scene with Ho and how he's backstabbing, you know, Rachel and trying to get at Bam. I mean, there is non-stop backstabbing within this episode, but also on top of that, we get a lot of, I guess, insight to the characters of how ugly they really can be to climb the tower. So this is something that's kind of been presented for a while now, but this episode kind of lets you really see the darker aspects of the series, and it just brings it straight up into your face. Like, you cannot, you know, not see it now. You have to actually look at it and see what these characters really are. For instance, we have seen these characters with a really happy and light side. We've seen them in a, a comedy setting. We've seen them have, you know, fun, joking around with each other. You know, they seem like nice individuals. Someone like Coon, someone like Rock, you know, all of them, you know, they look like really nice individuals. But when you really think about everything that's been going on within the series, and when they're not interacting, let's say, with Bam, they are not necessarily good individuals. I mean, let's think about Kuhn for a second, okay? Kuhn is someone that is very manipulative. He's someone that schemes. He's a schemer. He's someone that will put chess pieces in order just to be able to achieve victory, and in a lot of ways, he kind of manipulated this entire second part of for Team B to be able to win. So, Kuhn is a schemer, and he's done a lot of despicable things to other people that isn't necessarily affiliated with Bam, or someone that he actually cares about, basically, like, you know, Kuhn cares about Bam, you know, if he doesn't care about you, you know, he's willing to do some really awful and heinous things, and this entire element can be applied to Endorsey within this episode, and that's kind of the big point, is that this episode wanted to present that these characters are definitely not good people by any means, they fight for their own goals, they're very selfish, they're twisted in their own way, even though you might like them, even though they might have noble causes in some ways, there is some very dark and distorted things about them them, and let's look at, you know, Endorsey for a second. I think that's a big thing to talk about, because she had a major spotlight, but also was teaching Bam a lesson within this episode as well. Endorsey pretty much reveals a little bit more of her backstory, of how she became a princess of Zahad. She was someone that was adopted into one of the ten great families, and she had to compete amongst these other adoptees, people that were adopted by this family, to, and whoever was basically the best, like, a part of all these people that were adopted, they would be able to reach the status of Princess of Zahad. So obviously, when you were all selected, like they were all chosen basically, and they had to compete with each other, the one that did the best, the one that did the best in their training, the one that probably did the best in their studies, everything, they got to eat better food. They got to sit at the table near basically the head of the household and eat some nice roast beef, everything. They got to eat some really good food. But then, those that do really poorly, those are not able to kind of achieve anything, they have to sit away from the table, which we see in Dorsey within the flashback. She's just eating stale bread. She's someone that is not able to really have luxury. She is just someone that seems like she has nothing. She's literally barely getting on by. And so, for her to be able to get to the head of the table, she has to take out the others, you know, the survival of the fittest. She uh, takes out those that are stronger than her. She slowly kills them all off just for she can be able to position herself at the head of the table for there is no competition. Basically, if they're all gone, there is no competition, which means that she can eat anywhere she wants and have anything she wants to eat, but it's also an analogy on just how she achieved her status as Princess of Zahad, is that she literally got rid of all those around her just to be able to get that status. And this entire aspect could be applied to just the climbing of the tower, the whole point of climbing the tower. So, Endorsey has obviously done some very despicable things, but it's something that she technically had to do to be able to achieve her position. If she did not do that, most likely she would have been one of those that have fallen and would have died. So, she did it before anyone else did it. So, this type of environment is technically very natural within Tower of God. This is something very common. Betrayal, you know, kind of turning on the individual to be able to achieve your goal, etc. This is something very common within this series. You can clearly see that it's normal because even though the Ranker does not like these constant betrayals and traitors, it seems like he understands. It's bound to happen. He knows that he knows it's going to happen every so often, 
and he's not really shocked by it because it is a man that has climbed the tower. So you could just see that this type of environment is definitely very, very common. And that's why Bam is such an important character is because he's a major contrast to that environment. See, this is where it comes in. Many have talked about how Bam is very generic, Bam is very boring, he has no character, etc. And I've discussed this so many times, I'm not going to get into that already. There is obviously reasons for a lot of this, but one of the reasons which I can dive into is obviously because, like I said, he is a contrast to the environment within the story. Everybody is traitors. Everybody is willing to rip each other apart to be able to achieve their dreams. For instance, in Dorsey, getting rid of everybody else's dreams, shoving them down the tower to be able to climb with the one she wants to climb with, which is a knock, which is absolutely cute, by the way. I love that ponytail knock. It is truly a blessing. I love that scene, honestly. It's just so freaking cute. But the point, though, is getting back on topic is that... Um, Basically, in Dorsey, she was willing to get rid of anyone to be able to achieve what she wanted. And even if it meant she had to get rid of others to be able to climb with the people she wanted. Very similar to what Kuhn has done, basically. And Bam doesn't necessarily like that way of climbing the tower. And this is where it comes in with his personality. It, it is definitely very stereotypical of a, you know, goody two-shoes MC. But obviously, there is more to it than just what was presented in this episode, which I'm not going to dive into. But pretty much, he is so someone that wants to climb the tower without sacrificing people. But the thing is, with him having that type of mentality, it makes it to where he's putting his own friends, his objective at risk itself. See, that's the whole point of this, is that it's set in stone that there's only a certain amount of people that can pass these tests. Like, for instance, let's say there's only one fisherman that can pass up to the next floor of the tower. If, you know, let's say it was between a knock and a Dorsey, one of them would have to fail. It's just, it's set in stone. You cannot do anything about it. If it's a part of the test rules, it's a part of the test rules. You fell. That's the point. So, that is the thing here, is that Bam actively trying to stop people from failing and trying to get everyone to pass and move on up together makes it very difficult for him to achieve his own dream of being able to see Rachel one day but also to be able to keep his friends around as well because the more people he tries to bring up with him the harder it is to actually climb the tower he's putting his own self and others at risk it's not just you know him trying to be goody two-shoes it's actually a liability in a lot of ways which is what Endorsey was trying to say to him what she was presenting is that what you're doing is not necessarily it, it, it's not good. Like, I understand your intentions are very pure. You're, you're a wonderful person. You, you definitely have a really good heart, but what you're doing is not necessarily a good thing, necessarily. What you're trying to achieve is very short-sighted. It's not going to get you very far amongst the tower because of how the tower is designed in the first place, which could lead into some things maybe what Bam wants. Maybe, you know, he will have to climb the tower and he might want to change something like this. Who really knows? But the point is that... Bam had a wake-up call. He got to see firsthand that there is going to be those that cannot climb the tower. As much as he wants someone to climb with him, they're not going to be able to climb. Example, Ho. Ho is a casualty within this episode. He is someone that wanted to climb the tower. Bam wanted to climb the tower with him, but obviously that's just not going to happen now for obvious reasons within the episode. And this makes Bam come to a realization that sometimes he's not going to be able to get what he wants. He's not going to be able to bring everyone up with him. It's just, it's not. It's a fairy tale. It will not happen. And so this obviously could lead into some character development for him, characterization allowing him to see some of the flaws within his mentality. But on top of that as well, we get to see a little bit more about his character too and how he is growing in terms of power. He's able to perfectly replicate what the Ranker did using his Shinsu to freeze Ho when he was about to stab Rachel and finish her completely off. That is the point there, is that Bam is obviously really, really gifted with Shinsu, and he's able to really demonstrate a high level of power, which also goes with the theme as well, with the weak and the strong. And that's kind of where Ho's character comes as well, since I'm already talking about him. Ho, he died thanks to jealousy and weakness. That's how Ho died. And it's really sad how his character came to its conclusion because he was, 
he was someone that was so weak he could not climb the tower and he was so jealous of those around him he could not see what he already had and what he was capable of and maybe he could have found another way you know Serena is kind of that type of character she's someone that is very much similar to Ho but she chose a different path she chose to climb with others and find something be able to find a group of friends find meaning in her life basically and not just hold on to jealousy she just wants a group of people to be around and even though Serena also realizes she's weak, she doesn't want to fall into jealousy. She She's upset that she can't necessarily be as strong as maybe others, but at the same time, she's not going to let that get her down to stop from climbing and trying to do it her own way. I think it's a very fascinating way to kind of showcase these themes with Ho and Serena, but also in Dorsey and Bam, and how some of these characters are very strong and some of them are very weak, and how kind of they feel about the entire situation. you got to imagine where it comes from with someone like like Bam. Like, Bam, he's someone that is very gifted. He's someone very strong. He's very lucky. And he is obviously having this ideology. He's throwing it around like, oh, everybody can climb the tower. And, you know, he's very strong and all that. And, you know, these people that are below, weak and all that, are probably looking at him with anger, jealousy. Like, how dare you say these things while you've been gifted with the ability to be happy and think you're strong enough to be able to bring everyone up with you. You know, obviously, this is going to harm a lot of people's pride, ego. And, and maybe in some parts, it might have upset Ho to some degree, which could have led to what happened within this episode. But yeah, I think though that this episode does a good job. It does a really fantastic job of just showcasing the story of what really is going on here, what it means to truly climb the tower, what it means to sacrifice something, what it means to maybe have to do something very ugly to achieve something. And, you know, and Dorsey kind of presented that to Bam. Bam has to now understand that, and, you know, he's gonna have to overcome that because of everything. So, um, let's, uh, get into other aspects. Let's talk about, um, Rachel, and let's also talk about the Silent Man. So, Rachel, she appeared in this episode, and she pretty much officially is known to be Rachel now by Bam. Like, Bam is 100% certain now it is Rachel. He knows now. And it's no, like, you know, fear crafting within his head. It's not a guess. He knows Rachel is there. So because of this, this is definitely going to lead into something that has been building up since the very beginning, is that Bam has been trying to find Rachel. He's been trying to find her. He's been trying to figure out why she would climb the tower, etc. And now that technically has come face to face with her, not once, but now a second time, and there's no way for her to really hide it, this makes it to where Rachel can no longer skirt around the issue. She actually has to confront the elephant in the room. Like, why is she not wanting to be seen by Bam? Why is she avoiding him? Why did she change her name? You know, why did she leave him, etc. You know, all these little things, basically, you know, this is something that, you know, has been building up. And finally, it's been presented to where Bam technically has achieved his goal. He hasn't even climbed up the tower yet, and he's already achieved what he set out to do. He has now discovered where Rachel is. He has found her, and there is no way Rachel's gonna technically be able to back out of this now because he can talk with her because he knows it's her now it's no lying anymore and you know nobody could kind of persuade him to think it's not Rachel so because of that there is definitely going to be a conversation so we're going to probably get more details on the reason why and the reason why Rachel has potentially been avoiding Bam now speaking of which let's talk about the silent man the silent man that has been with Rock for a while now, been eating candy bars, having a good time for comedic relief, he disappears within this episode after Rachel takes a little bit of damage in the back, and obviously this is gonna make many raise eyebrows. They're gonna be like, okay, so what's going on here? Why did this man just straight up disappear after Rachel took damage? Does this mean that somehow that dude was spiritually linked with Rachel in some case? Because the way his facial reaction was and how he really reacted when Rachel got hurt? You know, what really happened there? But also also, another question is, who was the one that gave the letter to Ho to even attack Rachel in the first place? And there's a lot of prime suspects when you think about it. I mean, you have Kuhn, which makes a lot of sense. He's a schemer. And I mean, it, it, it makes so much sense because it's obvious the Ranker was warned by Kuhn in this episode because he knew something like what Ho was doing was going to happen. And that's why he appeared, why he got so upset. And if it's not Kuhn, then is it maybe Endorsey? Maybe Endorsey put a letter there since she knows who Rachel really is. Like, you know, she knew Michelle Light was actually Rachel and wanted Bam to come face to face 
with Rachel for there is no reason for them to basically hide from each other. Rachel can no longer hide and skirt around the issue. They can finally discuss their problems. Did Endorsey set this up? Or is it the mysterious red-headed girl following Bam and then behind the scenes that has been appearing every so often that just seems very shady? And there's really not much we really know about this character, honestly. We don't really know much, and she's been appearing every so often, and that's just something that's very fascinating as well. Did she do something? Is she doing something, or is she just taking an interest and watching from the scenes before she finally makes her move there is questions but okay overall though i think that this episode is great and i can't wait to watch the next one tell me your thoughts in the comments below if you enjoyed this episode but with that i love you guys be safe stay healthy if you enjoy my content you know please subscribe if you like this video please leave a like and with that chibi out